It's April 2020. You're safe inside your house, far away from being exposed to the deadly China virus that's ravaging the planet. Your leaders have told you not to worry, that this is extremely dangerous, but they'll get it under control. For now, you just have to remain indoors. Anyone that disobeys and decides to pop out of the house for a quick jog around the park, to walk their dog, whatever it is, is responsible for literally killing Granny. Killing Granny, you think? Your grandma is so lovely. She's a sweet human being and you'd do everything you can to protect her from harm. What kind of monster would deliberately go out and kill her? <clears throat> the Canadian government. That's who, in fact, they're granny killing experts. And not only that, but they want to kill you, your children, and everyone you've ever loved. But before we get into the absolutely insane story that is Canada's euthanasia laws, I wanted to say a huge thank you to our sponsor, Noble Gold, who, unlike the Canadian government, don't want anyone's grandma dying, but instead just want people out there feeling secure, living their best lives. Now, the Bank of America has just lowered its 2022 forecast for the S&P 500 by a whopping 900 points to 3,600, saying we are headed for a recession this year and that the new year-end target is the lowest on the street. This is not good news for those of you stuck in equities or anything tied to the stock markets. I know thousands of people have put their trust in Noble Gold to prevent losing money in the financial storm that is brewing. Noble Gold was recently voted the number one gold company in the country by Consumer Affairs, and you can get on board with them by calling their expert team today. Not a call center, not scripted responses, but just real people with honest options for you. And by the way, they are giving away a beautiful one-tenth ounce gold American Eagle proof coin with every qualifying IRA or 401k rollover this month. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold. Call the team now at 877-646-5347 to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. Okay, I'll admit it. When I opened the video by saying the Canadian government want to murder your grandmother, I'm being a little hyperbolic here, but it's not that far off from the truth. Canada has the most lax legislation on euthanasia on this entire planet, even when compared to the other countries where it's legal, which include Belgium, Colombia, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Spain, and some states in America and Australia. A relatively recent phenomenon, euthanasia and assisted suicide, became legal in Canada in 2016, which, although originally only permitted people to die if their death was reasonably foreseeable and if they were enduring unbearable physical or mental suffering, pretty soon it was expanded to people who weren't terminally ill and just had a serious illness or a disability. Can you see the problem here? The Canadian government can't, which is why now you see reports blasted over the internet of people being pressured into taking their own lives by the authorities without a second thought for the serious consequences. A number of cases jumped right out to me as being some of the most shocking, which I want to share with you today. Alan Nichols, 61, was killed by the Canadian authorities in July 2019. Nichols had been hospitalized just a month prior over concerns that he was going to kill himself. And instead of treating him, he was basically put to death, as his brother Gary succinctly put it. Alan was deaf, having lost hearing at 12 after a brain surgery. This was the sole reason why he requested to die on his certificate. Gary told the press that while he needed some help from family, he was not so disabled that he qualified for euthanasia. After he died, the Nichols family reported his death to the police and healthcare authorities, alleging that he did not have the capacity to fully understand what was going on, that he had not been taking his medication properly, nor was he using the specialized implant that helped him hear. His sister-in-law, Trish, said that somebody needs to take responsibility for what happened here, and that she was terrified of another relative being handed euthanasia forms by hospital staff in Canada. But of course, the hospital denied their accusations, claimed that Alan had made a valid request for euthanasia, and that no, they did not even have to inform relatives because of patient privacy. You know, don't even give them the chance to try to talk their family member off that ledge. Now, someone in favor of euthanasia might not have a problem with this. 
It was his choice to die. So what? His family members are sad, but he had the right to kill himself and freely chose to do so. So perhaps this case won't make everyone who's watching this video as incensed as it did me, but it gets worse. Much, much worse. What would you say if people were choosing to be killed by the state rather than face crippling medical debt? People who don't want to die, but can't see any other way out. But Lauren, that's absurd, you may say. No healthy society would allow that to happen. <clears throat> And yet, Sean Tager, 41, was killed just one month after Allen. Sean had Lou Gehrig's disease and needed daily care, which the government provided for 16 hours a day, but for the other eight, he had to fork over 264 Canadian dollars a day, money he did not have. After he was told the only way he could basically continue to live was to have him move to an institution, he refused because he wanted to stay close to his young son. Speaking to the CBC, he said that move away from his family, who were, you know, the only social aspect of his life, would have been a death sentence. I know I'm asking for change, he wrote on Facebook just before he died. I just didn't realize that was an unacceptable thing to do. He was left with the choice of not being with his family or dying, and he chose to die. I don't know how any thinking-minded person could come to the conclusion that this is a normal or acceptable way to deal with problems like this. Yes, that's right. Rather than support those who have a medical condition in a system we as Canadians already pay ridiculous amounts of tax dollars into, we're just going to create a system where we kill them because it costs too much? In fact, not only are people making those decisions by themselves, the government is actually encouraging them to do so if they need expensive care. I'm not joking. The Associated Press obtained a recording made by Roger Foley, a man who was hospitalized because of his degenerative brain disorder. In the secret recording, the director of ethics for the hospital told him that to care for him, it would cost north of $1,500 a day. In response, he accused the director of trying to coerce him into being euthanized by mentioning how much money it would cost the hospital to treat him and asked what plans were in place to care for him long term. Roger, this is not my show, he responded, declaring that the only reason for their conversation was to see if he had any interest in assisted dying. Roger had never mentioned euthanasia before. This is happening all over Canada. A veteran with PTSD and a traumatic brain injury called the veteran services looking for support for his mental health condition. But instead, the employee who he spoke to brought up euthanasia completely unprompted. According to Global News, he had actually been recovering, both physically and mentally, and felt betrayed, in his words, by the person he called for assistance on that recovery journey, suggesting that why not he just die when he's in this vulnerable position. And one more, Sheila Elson, whose daughter has a number of serious conditions, including spina bifida and cerebral palsy, told the CBC that a nurse said she was being selfish, that she wasn't interested in having her daughter killed. Selfish. I'm sorry, but what the... You're selfish because you don't want the state to murder your daughter? If you aren't convinced that what the Canadian government is doing and allowing to happen here is an absolutely inhumane, I think you need to get your head checked, regardless of what side you actually fall on on the euthanasia debate. But God forbid you talk to some of Canada's health professionals about your head, they might just suggest you die. Look, I understand that in theory, we should try and reduce human suffering as much as possible, to live in crippling pain every day would be incredibly difficult. And I can understand for those who have had a terminal illness and are going to die very soon regardless wanting this. They may want to avoid those last few days of intense suffering. But in some ways, the arguments for euthanasia match up to the classic opposition to communism. It may work in theory, but it's not working in practice. Of course, I will say that communism actually doesn't work very well in theory either, but I'm sure I don't need to rehash that old argument with you guys. The problem with legalizing euthanasia like this is that it leads to a culture of death. Trying to minimize pain and suffering is not the same as deliberately killing someone or encouraging it. The slippery slope fallacy has often been related to euthanasia. Don't you worry, conservatives. It's only going to be for people who are just at death's door. It will never go any further than that. But the evidence bears it out that once again, the slippery slope is not in fact a fallacy 
It's real. First, this was for terminal illness, and now it's for any physical illness. And now, Canada is getting ready to allow people to kill themselves if they only have a mental health condition. So if you're depressed, rather than get a therapist or the right medication, the state will instead send you straight to the grave themselves. Oh, and not just adults, children too. But only if they're mature minors, guys. So don't worry, if you're a 15-year-old girl with anorexia, why wait for life to get better when you can just pop into the hospital and end it all? Thanks, Trudeau. I want to leave you with a statement and a question. jean yves Duclos, the current health minister of Canada, says that the current laws on our books recognize the rights of all persons as well as the inherent and equal value of every life. Do you believe him?